Taking his second career, Delano Polo Award is Michael Sykes in the number 44 Inglesby for Flash Racing. Adrian Devereaux is on the outside of the front row. He is yet to start off the front row this year. Leonard Roderick in fifth place thinks he's a great car for the race. Scott Stoidler, car 74, does as well. Ryan Matthews starts in 10th, best start of his career, I believe. Going a little further back on the grid, you'll notice Otto Kekin in 21st place. I didn't think he'd be that far down on the grid. Scott Bates in car 88 is a great car over long runs. So do the James Dalton cars. Craig Mummett and Charlie Waters look out for them in the race as well. And Anthony Griffith, car 08, is going to start the second race in a row from last place. Due to a penalty he gained at uh, the round of Georgia for that uh, rather silly collision with Dan McKay fairly early on. After this race, there's going to be an investigation into the design of the Colt Morel Altair. Uh, we'll keep tabs on that, but uh, personally, I didn't think that uh, Hodges Walter Race is going to get off scot-free, and I'll be surprised if more teams haven't caught up to them come the rounds of England. Dan, off to you. Thank you, Lance. Michael Sykes gets a good jump over the rest of the field. Adrian Dever on the outside of the front row. Doesn't necessarily get a good start, but uh, wow, that second row did not really get a good run into turn one at all. Luciano Savarola and Packer Carroll, neither of them got a very good start. And, uh, well, Michael Sykes and Adrian Devereaux have been the two quickest cars in practice, but here's been another one of the fastest cars all throughout the weekend. Kevin Dwyer, car 72, has been very strong in all the practice sessions. Uh, we expect good things from him in the race in the 72 car, uh, but... Uh, just to remember, it, this is, is his first time racing here in a Master Cup car. We'll just have to see how he goes today. He qualified eighth, uh, and uh, we'll have to see how uh, today goes for him in the Royal Blue 72. Michael Sykes comes... Oh! Michael Sykes just caught the wall! This is just at the end of lap two, and that's a little early to be pushing it that hard. And Sykes, he just got way up out of the groove there and just tagged the wall pretty solidly. I'm pretty sure he's just feeling the car out to make sure if he's got any serious damage to that car. I don't think so, but uh, that's a little early to be doing that. Leonid Rodder, car number four, did not qualify as well as he would like. He qualified in fifth place. He hoped to be on the front row because he thinks that the Inglesby's have now reached um, the same level of performance that the Altairs have. But uh, here at Carbondale, it doesn't necessarily matter as much what kind of car you have uh, because the straights just aren't really uh, long enough to, for some of these uh, more powerful engines to really pull away. We've seen some... Uh, of course, the Trevor Carrington car scored points here last year, and this is one of their drivers from last year, speaking of the old Trevor Carrington team. Davina Henton, car number six, had a great run last year when she was driving for the very underfunded uh, Trevor Carrington team. Underfunded, underpowered, under everything. Still managed points here last year, so it is possible to do very well here with um, a subpar car. Henton's already been in the wall as well, looks like. As we're on board, Chris Shahans in the uh, 64 car. There's Yami Notenshi in the 25. In, uh, it's one of the Owen DeGarmo cars. And now we're going to see Tenshi making a very bold move here. Three wide pass, and Tenshi says thank you. Whoa, contact there. Tenshi didn't quite have Henton cleared. Almost did, and almost caused a big wreck right there. However, that wasn't the first caution of the day. We got that on lap eight. Rene Rekamir in car number 12 is going to get into the back of car 777, Ian Cooper. It's going to send the 777 car and the 12 car towards the inside wall. The 777 car gets on two wheels, and he's going to get hit by Dan McKay in the 50 car. Marcus Leonard gets a bit in the 999 car, and I think Kirk Pliskin got a bit as well. Uh, a bit of damage in uh, that mess as well. Adrian Devereaux hit the pit lane. Uh, Leonard Roderick stayed out. Not too many people stayed on the racetrack. I'm a little surprised that so many people pitted as early as they did. You'll notice there's some cars in that leaderboard that uh, normally we don't necessarily see at the front or that qualified way in the back. Leonard Roderick in the lead right now. Martinez, in particular, is running towards the back of the field. Tom Moore, car 52. This is the Big Mac team. He's uh, This is his first ever start. He's running in seventh place. Moore from Seattle. Uh, hasn't exactly been that quick this weekend, but... Uh, Oh, well, he hasn't really been running into the walls and knocking them down. Michael Madrigal in the 63 car, however, has sort of been knocking the walls down. He's um, kind of been a human ping pong ball in practice, but uh, looks like he's cleaned up his act uh, ever since then. Here is car 41, Greg Woodard. Now, this is the one of the Independence Trophy cars that people are going to be paying attention to. This is the factory Lycoya team, the uh, Terra International Motorsports bunch. Woodard qualified 14th. He's running, having a very strong race so far. Chris Shahans in car 64. Is going to be holding up Woodard's Lycoya, and there goes Woodard. 
just right around Chris Hans, pretty much as if he wasn't even there. And uh, that car right behind you, Hans, it's that white car that is Azuma Kazuyama in the 18 car as Matthias Tau goes around the outside, and Asova's back there, Kevin Dwyer's back there, Henson's back there. So uh, Johan's uh, kind of stacking up the field at the moment. Craig Mummert, car 29. Now we expected him to be very good on these shorter ovals because of all his modified experience. Although despite all that modified experience on short ovals, his only uh, major modified victory was on a road course. Uh, Craig Mummert, very versatile driver there. And he's having a very strong run for this James Dalton team early in the going. R uh, Ryan Matthews' good day is going to turn sour pretty quickly. He has to pit for a cut tire fairly early on in the going. Brian Sendak is back in the series in car number 19, the Black Diamond car. This car was driven by Chris Davenport in the first uh, two races. Sendak will be running here, and uh, he will be running, I believe, later in the season a couple races. Not exactly having the best of runs in this 19 car so far. Avery Holtzman will drive this car in England. We had a second caution at lap 21, which you may just have seen. Okay, this is really nothing more I can say other than Tom Moore just gets wrecked by Jose Luis Martinez. I don't really know what else you can say to that. Uh, that was just way too ambitious. Not even close. Have a look at the onboard from Packer Carroll if you want to see how, um, well, not close this wreck was. Uh, there's more. Martinez just comes in with a huge head of steam, runs over the 52 car, and just takes both of them into the wall. Uh, I think the fact that Martinez took himself into the wall as well was just sort of instant karma right there. That was pretty ridiculous. Anyway, Leonid Roderick is still leading on the restart. The 11 car of Matthews is the last car in the lead lap. Anthony Griffith in the 08 car has had a couple of long pit stops. That Power Steering Incorporated bunch and Dan Lechleiter in the 110 car, the fourth independent trophy car in this race, is also off the lead lap. But uh, Ashby has a go at the lead there in the 55. And uh, looks like Roderick's going to have to really work on it. And Ashby takes over first. Scott Bates in the, in the 88 car has, is having a pretty good run so far. Uh, he's come from the back, up towards the front, uses a little bit of strategy to get there, and, uh, well, he's clearly showing he's got a pretty quick car, but that's Luciano in that green number three car. Remember, he got, he's our, the most recent winner in this series, winning at Road Atlanta. There's Adrian Devereaux in that uh, blue car in the background, Packer Carroll up in the mix as well, but Scott Bates in the 88 car looks like he could be one of the stars of the show, but right now, Zelda Ashby is the star. Oh, Ashby just got the wall! Wow, so Ashby just went way, just pushed it too hard, tagged the wall, and I think got the wall again! So Ashby just hits the wall twice in the sp- <laughs> Wow, that 55 car is really not handling that well. That's a fast race car and a fast driver, but uh, hang on to it. That's going to be a pretty long day if you don't have a car that handles well here. Oh boy. Arjo Kakin in car number 9, they mentioned, Lance mentioned in the uh, pre-race that he didn't qualify as well as he'd like. Well, he's having a pretty long day so far. He's not running very well. He's not, he's outside the, well outside the points in this number 9 car. And uh, we expected Art to be performing a little better than that. But the team doesn't seem concerned about that, interestingly enough. Leonid Roderick and Scott Bates have begun to open up a bit of a gap on the rest of the field. As uh, Roderick not really getting held up by Dan Lechleiter there. Um, Roderick's not exactly on Lechleiter's bumper, otherwise I think he might have given him the uh, friendly tap. But then again, Lechleiter is trying to stay in the lead lap. If he gets a caution, he's back in the race and in the hunt for points. The two Xenos cars, Marcus Leonard and car triple nine, Zach Duff a couple places ahead of him, are all like Arto Kakinen, having a very poor showing. Xenos came into the season with fairly high hopes after signing both Leonard and Duff, and they really haven't had the speed or the results to show for it. Um, the Xenos team has not exactly been one of the more popular teams in the paddock, and uh, there's a pretty long story about that. But uh, here's Kevin Dwyer running in 12th place. I'll elaborate on the Xenos story at another time. But uh, there's Kevin Dwyer in 12th place having a strong run. Now uh, let's have a look left side of the picture there. Craig Mummer going on the outside of Adrian Devereaux. Look at that yellow car. Greg Woodard going three wide onto the front straight. Oh, that was almost a pile up right there. Oh my, that was a great move by Greg Woodard. Now let's get a, more of a closer view of this from Scott Stoidler's uh, roof camera. Boy, if this boy if this shot right here doesn't get on the highlight reels for uh, some of the promotional videos, I'll be surprised because that was a great move by Woodard in that Lycoya. That 41 car is just flying today. Just went around Adrian Devereaux, who's pretty much been the dominant force in the series so far. 
looked like he was barely even there, and they all managed not to wad him all up. Scott Stoidler having a solid day in 11th place. Um, much to people's surprise, he's beaten Chris Johans on a fairly regular basis this season. Uh, even before Chris Johans inevitably conks out of the race, Michael Sykes, the pole sitter, is sitting just on the edge of the points right now. About 19th, 20th place. Slowly going backwards, but uh, then again, he's in the outside lane at the moment. Uh, now there's the uh, car number 5, that Zach Duff car. They're originally going to rebrand that car as they were going to have that uh, carry the number 46, which was Scott Hamilton's number from last season. And, uh, of course, that, doesn't exa that didn't exactly sit too well. Of course, the running tradition is if someone is killed while driving a certain number, they retire that number for a whole year. That's sort of one of the more established practices in this series. Scott Bates is going to take over the lead from Leonard Roderick as they have to navigate around Anthony Griffith, who uh, sort of held up Leonard Roderick for a good three laps and gave Bates a run on him. Now, we're going to get a good look at that rear spoiler. That says, never follow, always lead. That is Scott Bates' personal motto. And, uh, well, <laughs> he's certainly leading right now. And he's uh, was rather tired of following Leonard Roderick. we got a caution on lap 52, the third of the day, at about the one-third mark in the race. And again, which involves Jose Luis Martinez, however, not of his own doing. Zach Duff hits the wall. It doesn't give Martinez a whole lot of room to avoid him. Martinez, as ping-pongs around, takes out one of the Majestic Motorsports cars. I think that's Recamer. Yeah, that's Recamer in the 12 car. So, uh, well, Martinez has been on the wall a bit more than he needs to be. Duff just pushed up the track. Martinez, no, really nowhere to go there. And just got in the 12 car, took all three of them into the wall. All three continued on. Standard racing incident. Really not much you can do about uh, things like that. All you can do is just sort of be along for the ride and hope you're not in it. Scott Bates gets a, gets a great jump on the restart there in that 88 car. And uh, Leonid Roudick, you may, note it, may have noticed, was not there. He hit the pit lane along with a bunch of other cars. Greg Woodard is in second. Scott Stoidler is in third. Now, going a little further back to check on Greg Woodard. He's gotten around Ian Cooper, that lapped car. And uh, Scott Stoiler has followed him up to Scott Bates. Now, Greg Woodard has a lot of experience at this track, all that uh, Midwest short track racing. Uh, he's raced here several times in the Terra International Motorsports car. The uh, Terra International Motorsports car, uh, the, the nickname for that team uh, around the paddock has been to call them the Timmies because, well, if you make an acronym out of Terra International Motorsports, you get T-I-M. Dan Lechleiter in car 110, the fourth uh, independent trophy car. Not exactly been having a great run here. Kind of, uh, well, been a little all over the place. Zach Duff, it's the pit lane car five unscheduled. Not sure why that was. However, he got a break because we got a caution on lap 66. And it's going to involve our good friend, Mr. Dan Lecklider, as he pulls right in front of Dale Roswell. Roswell tries to go three, tries to go around him, forgets that the 11's there, takes all three of them into the wall. That was, I think that was also kind of a racing incident. The 11 just kind of came on Roswell very, very quickly, and uh, by the time Roswell's pulling out, really was no time to pull back in line. Blake Camphouse in car 15 takes over the lead on the restart after, again, all the leaders hit the pit lane. Scott Stoidler is in second place right now. In fact, uh, the 15 was the only car really to stay out. Ian Cooper, car 777, he's on pace the leaders. Only problem, he's in 34th place in a 36-car field, and only one car, Dan McKay, is actually out of the race. So, Ian Cooper, uh, not exactly having the best of days right now, even though he's got a quick car. Lewis Kingston, car number 17, has worked his way all the way up to second. This uh, 17 car didn't qualify that well. However, Kingston is clearly showing that he has the pace when it matters, which course is on Sunday and not on Saturday. There, are, uh, well, the 17 car, he'll have his regular teammate Tom Delgado for the round of England. However, we had another caution on lap 84 to interrupt that green flag run. And here we are again. Roswell again and Lecklider. However, <laughs> again, just Roswell just got kind of uh, crossed up there. Arto was Arto Kacken in the nine car was there and just puts Roswell into the wall. Another standard racing incident as far as I'm concerned. Triple Seven car finally drops out of the race, ending his miserable day. Gearbox problems put him out. Scott Stoidler leads on the restart, but he gives Luciano Savarol a big enough lane to drive three semi-trucks into. 
And Savaral says, thank you very much. I'll take over the lead, but I've got a problem. There's that five car in the way. Oh, Stoiler into the wall. Uh, well, Scott Stoiler did just give Luciano Savaral a huge bit of space there on that restart, and Luciano just took it with both hands. As we're on board with the car number three right now, that's what he wants to see. Clear sailing in front of him. Well, almost. There's a lap car, Zach Duff, right in front of him. Now, Duff is on the lead lap as it stands. Tyra from that uh, contact with the wall brings Scott Stoiler into the pit lane. So that's uh, going to turn his good run into a, uh, well, a very long and miserable day. Especially if we go green the rest of the way. Greg Woodard in that 41 car is beginning to challenge Luciano. Luciano gets a little bit off. Crossed up, and now Greg Woodard in the Lycoya sweeps into the lead of the race. Greg Woodard from Illinois. He's uh, not from too far away. He's actually from Decatur, Illinois. And he's having a very good run here in this uh, 41 car. The Terra International Motorsports car, single car team, independent trophy team, leading the race like in Lycoya's third race. You may have seen this car running around. That's Kurt Pliskin, the car without a front end on it. They pulled the whole front end off that car after the first yellow. He did get some damage in that uh, initial caution. He's running in 20th place. Brian Sendak in car number 19. He was running very poorly early on. He's running in 6th place. He's been really marching through the field along with Yulia Nasova in car number 8. Nasova is in, currently running 8th and you'll notice a little bit further back Matthias Taub is running in 10th. Now Nasova in this 8 car it's been one of the surprises early on in the season. We didn't expect uh, Nasovi running very well. Tab, we've expected uh, some good things from, and uh, he's shown some pretty ominous pace early on in the season. Adrian Devereaux, car one, is going to make a move on his teammate, Luciano Savarol, in car three. There's no team orders at Hodges Walter Racing. Luciano's not making his life easy. If there were team orders, Devereaux would have been around Savarol five laps ago. So, uh... Devereaux going to have a run at Woodard now, it looks like. Charlie Waters has marched his way up to 11th. Azuma Kaziyama in his last race in this 18 car is in 12th. Arto Kakinen running 13th. Arto's really turned his day around. Brian Sendak has moved his way up to 4th. He's closing in on Luciano Savaral very quickly. Now, we're talking about small teams. Brian Sendak's team uh, was pretty much formed about a week before the season started. And he's running fourth. The Black Diamond cars have been very quick this season, and that's a huge surprise to everyone. Devereaux in car number one is beginning to close in on... Wo oh, Devereaux catches the wall! Adrian Devereaux has just caught the wall. The defending champion of the series just smashed the wall with that car number one, but he's got a great run on Greg Woodard coming. Woodard now is going to see this one car very close in his rearview mirrors. Devereaux just kind of hanging back there like some kind of predator, predatory shark or something. Whoa, Devereaux almost gets into the back of the 41 car. But Devereaux's uh, been very good about racing people very cleanly in this series. You can see how much damage he's done on the right side there of that car number one, the uh, Haas manufacturing machine. As we're looking out front of Greg Woodard, great cameras they mounted on this Lycoya, by the way. As uh, Devereaux clears Woodard at the moment. But Woodard's going to try that outside line. He's been really looking up up there. And, oh, Woodard's caught the wall now. Boy, if you don't think these two guys are racing hard yet, I don't know what you I don't know what you think you're doing there. But anyway, Woodard trying to get a run on Devereaux on the outside. And it looks like he's got it. Greg Woodard is going to make a move around the outside. And he looks like he's going to make, looks like he made it stick. Here we got a replay of that. Uh, this, is the, this is a replay of that, of that initial move there. Coming by the start-finish line, Greg Woodard coming into one, sweeps it way high in the wall. Where do you think you are, Darlington? There's not supposed to be a lane on the outside in turn one at Carbondale, but Woodard found one, and he's made it stick. Brilliant move by Woodard to take over the lead again from Adrian Devereaux. Devereaux now looks like he's just hanging back at the moment. Doesn't look like he's uh, using up his tires, and uh, going to see if Greg Woodard will push his car too hard and use up all of his Use up his tire so that Deborah will be able to have a run on him later. A uh, bit of strategy there. VJ Pushanda on the Tutino, running 22nd. He could score points in this car. Remember I said earlier on that you didn't necessarily need the quickest car in the field to score points here? Proof positive of that. Now, Greg Woodard is really pushing his car hard. He's getting around the uh, number five car of Zach Duff. That's a lapped car. Duff, though, is trying to keep himself on the lead lap so that he still has a chance to score some points here today. So Duff is uh, kind of entitled to fight back there. 
and Duff is going to fight back in this five car. Now, if I'm Greg Woodard and I have a, a fairly big lead over Adrian Devereaux, I'm not entirely sure I want to push this hard, especially since Devereaux is doing a good job of saving his tires, and especially since we got a caution with 15 laps to go. And Kevin Dwyer's in trouble. Car number 72 has a puncture in the right rear. And uh, Devra, uh, Adrian Devereaux is going to take advantage of this and is going to have a little bit of a cheeky run here on Greg Woodard. Woodard slowed up for the yellow, and Adrian Devereaux is going to go by him on the outside. Oh, they race back to the yellow line. I'm not sure if Woodard forgot about that or not. But Devereaux just, just pulled a sneaky move on him, got a run on the 41, and went around him on the outside. Oh boy, some people thought that might have been a little unsporting, but uh, I'm not sure if uh, Woodard just didn't know Devereaux was that close or not. Anyway, restart with 10 laps to go. Devereaux, Woodard, Savaral, Sendak, Nasova, the top five. Devereaux's got a very good run going here, but Greg Woodard's going to get a challenge here from as Luciano Savaral as Woodard's chances of Pulling off an underdog upset are going up in smoke. Brian Sendak in the 19 car making a run now at uh, Woodard. As Woodard slides back to fourth. Nasova has a run on the 41 car, but Woodard now going back up to run that outside where he's been so strong today. Sendak in the, in the 19 car, though, is having a great run. Can Sendak have a challenge at the Hodges Walter cars? This 19 car has been very, very quick, and he is going to have a run at Luciano. And Devereaux, Chris Johans in car 64 is going to have mechanical problems with eight laps to go. And why are you staying on track? Why are you spewing oil all over the track? Get off the track! Thank... What? Pull off the track already. Not sure what that was all about. Uh, rather despicable there. Anyway, didn't seem to affect the leaders much. Adrian Devereaux is going to end up taking the win. Luciano Savarol and Brian Sendak did not have enough time to mount a sufficient challenge to take the win away from the Frenchman, making it two from three for Adrian Devereaux and the second time in a row that Hodges Walter cars have finished first and second. Brian Sendak completed the podium for the Black Diamond team. Greg Woodard led the most laps of the day. Great job for that Terra International Motorsports team in car 41. Great job by Woodard as well. It's only his third Master Cup start, and clearly he's shown he can mix it up with the big guns up front. Zelda Ashby comes home a very strong fifth, despite hitting the wall, uh, well, probably more times than the rest of the field put together, probably, on that 55 car. Scott Bates in sixth. Arto Kakinen, uh, very good run there for Arto. Very good run for Arto. It didn't say enough about Arto's run today. Charlie Waters probably saved his drive at that. Of course, James Dalton had told Charlie Waters and Craig Mummert that if you don't score points before Cariala, then you're getting uh, booted out of those cars. Well, clearly they've uh, kept their they've kept their drive so far. Anthony Griffith finally a race without a penalty in 13th place. I just had to mention that. Uh, Lewis Kingston all the way down in 18th place continues his run of points. Michael Sykes, despite winning the pole. Has to settle with 17th. Azuma Kaziyama in 16th place. That's his last run in this car. Tom Delgado will be back in that car for the round of England. And let's have a look at the championship points leaving Carbondale. And as we enter the European Tour, Adrian Devereaux is still on top of the charts with a massive lead in the standings. That shouldn't really be a surprise, though. When your worst finish is second and you've won two of the first three races, I would expect a lead like that. Especially when Luciano Savaral uh, didn't really have a good run in Las Vegas. Arto Kekkonen is still sitting third in the championship. I'd look out for that nine car. Especially since Gessler says they have a big upgrade plan for Europe. Uh, I think that the Gesslers could really begin to put a challenge in the hottest Walter cars. I wouldn't consider Devereaux to be running away at the championship. Remember, Chris Johans wiped out a pretty substantial lead Devereaux had in just three races. Scott Bates having a strong early part of the season as our uh, Yulian Asova, sixth in the championship. With the pace that Katsovs had last season, uh, who would have thought that Nasova would be this high in the championship? I think 70 points is, is twice as many as Nasova scored all of last season. So, uh, big turnaround over there. 
Leonid Roderick, I wouldn't necessarily count him out either. However, I would sort of count out Woodard and Sendak. They're not running the whole uh, schedule. And of course, Danny Savin, Azuma Kaziyama, Michael Madrigal, and Gaspar D'Souza also are not full-time on the circuit. Speaking of those drivers, though, let's have a look at the Independence Trophy standings, where their scores are a bit more important to them. Michael Madrigal, on the virtue of running two races in the, in the Independence Trophy so far, is on top of the charts. He had a pretty messy weekend up until the race, pretty much. Uh, Dan Lechleiter, in second of the champion in the Independence Trophy so far, uh, may not be feeling good about two races and 95 points only. I think he's going to have to pick it up a little bit. Greg Woodard, though, one race, 84 points. I'd say that he's looking very good to uh, be a serious contender for the Independence Trophy, as is Danny Saab in that 81 car. Of course, Tom Moore had did not necessarily have the best of debuts there in that 52 car. Only came home, I think, 30th, so uh, he's going to be at the bottom of the chart so far. Remember, the European Tour is coming up, and the two FinTech cars are going to begin to run, so we'll have to wait to see what they can do at the Round of England.